Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com. This article is from the Associated Press, July 29, 2006. Scientists say global warming causes killer heat waves. The computer models show that soon we'll get many more and hotter heat waves that will leave the old dust ball records of the 1930s in the dust, said Ken Kunkel, director of the Center for Atmospheric Sciences at the Illinois State Water Survey. The way to really judge will be when scientists look back a decade from now, not at a single heat wave, but at the frequency and extremes of all of them, said Mike Wallace, a professor of atmospheric sciences. That's when scientists will likely see a significant increase in heat waves and their severity. 126 degrees in Death Valley last week. Sacramento had 11 days at or above 100 degrees. Their old record was 9. We're seeing some impressive records out there to be sure, and unfortunately this is taking a human toll. Let's take a look at the first claim about Dust Bowl records getting shattered from the Center for Atmospheric Sciences in the Illinois State Water Survey. Afternoon temperatures in Illinois have plummeted over the last 90 years, as has the frequency of hot days. Ken Kunkel, the director of the center, had no clue what he was talking about. I'm particularly interested in these claims about California because I was in California at the peak of that heat wave. The claim is that Sacramento had 11 days at or above 100 degrees. Their old record was 9. The closest United States Historical Climatology Network station to Sacramento is at Davis, 20 miles away. They average 20 days a year over 100 degrees. The peak year was 1917 when they had 46 days over 100 degrees, and the trend has been sharply downwards over the past century. And the heat wave of 2006 was just about average at 20 days over 100 degrees. 110 degree days are also sharply down over the last 90 years, and in 2006 they had two of them. This graph shows all 2,267 days above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which have been recorded at Davis, California. Generally, heat waves at Davis were more frequent and hotter prior to 1960. The hottest day at Davis during the summer of 2006 was July 23rd, when they reached 113 degrees. We drove through there in the middle of the afternoon that day, and it was really hot. But when we got up to Lake Tahoe a couple hours later, it was quite cold. These claims about Sacramento temperatures in the 2006 Associated Press article were complete nonsense. The author had no idea what he was talking about. 100 degree days in Sacramento are quite common, and they used to have a lot more of them. Google AI says, Sacramento had 23 days with temperatures reaching 100 degrees or more in 2023. This is above the average of 23 days per year. So according to Google AI, 23 is more than 23. Now let's look at this mention of 126 degrees in Death Valley. Death Valley set the world's record temperature of 134 degrees Fahrenheit on July 10th, 1913. And during that week, they were over 126 degrees every single day. And they had three days over 130 degrees in one week. For the whole United States, the NOAA State Climate Survey shows that there's been a sharp drop in the frequency of very hot days since the 1930s Dust Bowl. This graph shows five-year increments, and this one shows one-year increments. The frequency of 95-degree days is down sharply since the 1930s, as is the frequency of 100-degree days. The 2017 National Climate Assessment showed that the duration, magnitude, and peak temperature of heat waves was much higher during the 1930s. Everything in this article from 2006 was complete nonsense. These academics had no clue what they were talking about. 2006 was a very important year for me. I started out the year as a true believer in global warming and finished the year a skeptic. January 2006 was the warmest January on record in Fort Collins, Colorado. Many days I was outside in short sleeves. I was certain that the warm weather during January 2006 was caused by increased levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Then I spent six months working in the Bay Area. It was very hot in July. Our swimming pool in Cupertino heated up all the way to the bottom of the pool. We drove back through Sacramento at the peak of the heat wave, and when we got back to Colorado, it was very hot there too. 
but by September it turned cold and wet. I was coaching kids soccer and spent many days cold outside in September. Then in December 2006, Fort Collins had their largest snowstorm on record. It was a complete mess and the weather stayed cold for weeks after that. I realized then that the simple model of carbon dioxide driving the climate didn't actually make a lot of sense. We had a very warm and dry January followed by a cold and snowy December. And I'm pretty sure carbon dioxide levels were higher in December than they were in January. Climate academics and journalists simply make things up, but they have no idea what they're talking about. They say whatever they need to to get attention and funding. Toto's been pulling back the curtain on the climate scam for more than 15 years. You can visit him and his family on the web at realclimatescience.com.